Hello there, my name is Levison Wood and I'm going to be reading you a bedtime story from my latest children's book. It's called Incredible Journeys and in this book are lots of stories from all around the world from great adventurers and explorers, boys and girls who've travelled to some of the most remote and incredible places on the planet. So I'm going to start tonight by reading you the introduction to my book which is where I got my own inspiration to travel from and how I became an explorer. So, when I was young, I dreamed of travelling the world. I used to stare out of my bedroom window and look across the garden fence towards the fields and beyond where the woods were. I imagined that further still, beyond the woods, there was a land that was completely unexplored. A place full of wild animals and beasts that even my parents didn't know. I wanted to explore this place of my imagination and see what it was really like. I began to read about places far away from my home, about other countries and cultures across the ages. I discovered prehistoric cave people and ancient Greeks and strange warriors called Vikings with long hair and long ships. I imagined what it must have been like to travel in those days, before aeroplanes were invented, when it took days, weeks, or even months to get anywhere. I read about the famous men and women who led the way, including Alexander the Great, who rode an ebony horse across all of Asia. I imagined myself on a horse myself, travelling through mountain passes, deserts and jungles. I learned about people through the ages who made great voyages too, such as Captain Cook, who sailed by ship to the far reaches of the oceans, and Amelia Earhart, who flew to distant lands in some of the first ever aeroplanes. But I wondered if there was anywhere left to explore in this modern world of ours. As a child, I loved camping, and I used to pretend that my garden was a steamy tropical jungle. I dreamed that one day I might camp in a real one, like the explorers that I'd read about. I promised myself that as soon as I was old enough, I would embark on my own adventures, and that's exactly what I did. I finished school, aged 18, and set off following in the footsteps of my heroes. I saw the savannas in Africa, deserts in Australia, mountains in the Himalayas and jungles in India. In fact, I had so many incredible adventures that I decided to become an explorer. But I soon realised that that wasn't easy. You need to know so much to be an explorer and have experience in many different things. So I carried on with my studies and learn even more about history and geography, travel and exploration. But I always took the time to travel whenever I could because I wanted to see the world for myself. Just like the very first humans who decided to leave their caves and venture into the unknown, I too was curious to see what was out there and not to settle for other people's stories. I wanted to have stories of my own. And now I do. Since those early travels, I've been lucky enough to visit over a hundred countries all over the world. I've walked across Africa, trekked the frontiers of Europe and traversed the Silk Road in the wake of Marco Polo. I've camped for months in jungles and walked across the Sahara Desert. I've voyaged across oceans and seen some pretty weird and wonderful things along the way. But I'll never forget how important it is to dream and to read. I, can, I hope you're inspired by this book and the stories of all these brave men and women who were pioneers of exploration. All these journeys were incredible for different reasons. Because they were all inspiring or magnificent or because they were incredible in length, duration and scope. One thing's for sure. There are lots of places still left to explore. The world is a big place and there are a lot of other worlds to discover too. 
So who knows where your inspiration will take you. I'm going to be reading more stories from this book over the next few days. So stay tuned in and I'll tell you all about some incredible journeys.